Hello my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts, and in this week's video, we're gonna cover how do you hide data with a filter rather than completely filtering it out of your worksheet. Okay, um, let's go ahead and dive in and talk about this. All right, uh, so I've got a worksheet here. Uh, I've already got some stuff pre-calculated. It's showing the amount of sales per subcategory for Superstore data, and then the percent of total is already calculated at the end of each bar. Right? So we can see phones makes up a little over 14% of all sales. Now the thing is, right now, if I change my filter, like let's say, I don't know, let's say I take chairs out of this, right? So chairs used to be the second biggest value, is at 14.3%, but with chairs gone, phones jumps from 14.4% to 16.8%. And this is gonna continue to be true. The percentages are updating based on what subcategories are in my worksheet. Okay, so what's the reason for that? Why are those percentages changing, all right? If we take a look at Tableau's order of operations, we will see that table calculations are calculated after dimension filters. That means if you have 17 subcategories and it hits a dimension filter and that knocks it down to let's say 10 subcategories, that percent of total is gonna be applied to the 10 rather than the 17. Probably 90% of the time, that's the kind of um, result that you would want but maybe not always, right? Maybe you'd like a situation where you can filter down to just specific subcategories and keep the overall percent of total without having to look at everything visually, okay? So how could you do that? Well, you can't with a normal filter, but with a table calculation filter, you can. So back to Tableau's order of operations, one of the very last things that gets applied to a worksheet is a table calculation filter. It even happens after table calcs. So what that means is if we can just think of a creative way to filter on the subcategory field, but set it up as a table calculation rather than just a standard dimension, we're gonna be golden, okay? So let me show you the really manual way of doing this, right? If I was to like select some headers and, and right click and hide, that hides the data. Um, so the percentages stay the same, but there's no ability for my user to control what's being hidden or unhidden. Only you or I, you know, here in Tableau desktop or in editing mode actually have that ability. Okay. So let me right click on my subcategory field and say, show hidden data, bring those back. So here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to create a calculation and we're going to use a table calculation uh, function to help us out here. In this case, we're going to use the lookup. Where is it? There we go. We're going to use the lookup function. Okay, so the lookup function, what it's usually used for is to say like, compare this value to the previous value. What's the percent difference between Q1 and Q2? That's how lookup is usually used. It allows you to look up points in the past or in the future. But in our case, we're gonna use it to look up the existing subcategory value, okay? Um, so what do I mean by that? So check this out. I'm gonna say lookup min subcategory zero. What does that mean? So what I'm telling Tableau is, you know, sort of this bar, look up the subcategory value and zero means the existing data point. If I said one, it would be looking up the next data point. So if like phones, it would actually look up the next one, it would say chairs. So I wanna be zero, the existing value. And why minimum? Why not maximum? Why an aggregation at all? Well, the way that table calculation functions work is they can only be applied to aggregated expressions. So we just have to put that min there as, as kind of a placeholder for us. Okay, so let's try this. I'm gonna say, okay, we're gonna put the subcategory lookup field on filters. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and show this filter and then watch this. So if I was to filter this down to just keep specific values, chairs, copiers, machines, appliances, look at those percent of totals. Those pretty clearly uh, don't add up to 100%. So it does seem like this is working, right? Phones is 14.4%, regardless of if all of our values are showing or even just phones. So that's kind of a cool way to be able to filter the worksheet. Um, and I think that the title of this, uh, videos may be a little misleading. Technically, we are still filtering the data, but it's happening so late in Tableau's order of operations that for all intents and purposes, it may as well just be hiding that data. Okay, so now that you know about that trick, let's talk about a little bit of nuance. Um, so first of all, let's say I want to have the ability to do the same thing, but with state. 
it's probably not going to work as well because state, first of all, state is not currently on the worksheet to be able to reference. Um, a table calculation references data, which is on the worksheet. So if we tried to create something like a, you know, state lookup field, I mean, I mean it's not going to give us an error or anything. Like we could say, look up the minimum of state uh, zero. There we go. Uh, but if I throw that on filters, it's going to be like, I guess what this is showing us is that the first state alphabetically for these different subcategories is either Alabama or Arizona, um, even though there's a lot more states than that in our data source, right? We've got like probably close to all 50. So that's not really going to work for us in quite the same way. <clears throat> so this feature is a little bit limited to, you know, if I had state in my, you know, on detail, for example, that's going to cause other kinds of issues for us. Um, but in theory, then my state lookup would have a lot more options to be able to select from. So it's not really kind of the ideal way to do it. I think this is going to be limited to dimensions which are visible, or if there's like a one-to-one -one relationship, like each subcategory rolls up to a category. So for example, I could just put category on color or detail. And then if I wanted to have a, a category lookup filter, then I could pretty easily do that with minimal repercussions, well, no repercussions really, hopefully. <laughs> so right, no problems here. If I throw category lookup on filters, you know, now I could say, oh, actually, I just want to see only furniture, right? And those percentages did, are still what they were before. So a little bit of a limitation there. Okay. Um, so that's the main reason, or the I say that's the main approach that I would use to sort of filter data out of my worksheet, but really it's gonna act more like it's hiding it. Um, but let me give you kind of a couple other use cases that maybe you wouldn't be super aware of, okay? So this data set's got four years, and let's say that, you know, in this case, the color of the bars represents what's the percent difference between this bar and the last one. So like 2021 phones, there was a 33% increase in sales. It went from 78,000 to 105,000. Uh, but what if I only wanna see the very last column? Okay, so a quick option for that is I'll call this last column only. I spelled column correctly here. So back to my table calculation fields, one of them is called last. So if I say last equals zero, what that's gonna do is it's going to just return, well, I'm gonna have to kind of set some of the preferences, but I can set it up so that it only shows me the last column, okay? Because normally, let me just filter this normally first, like add just a 2021 year filter. The problem with this is the percent uh, difference doesn't work anymore because the percent difference is based on a table calculation. And in order for that percent difference to calculate correctly, this value needs to have a previous value to look at. If I apply a filter, it no longer has that prior value to reference, okay? Um, but with a last function, which is a table calculation uh, uh, function, what I can do is if I put last column only on filters, I'm gonna say true, say okay. Now it didn't work correctly, but we're just one step away. I think what it did here is it kept the last, yeah, it just kept the last subcategory rather than, so the last row rather than the last column. So I said true. Okay, not exactly what we were going for. I'm gonna hit the drop down and say edit table calculation. And instead of running this on table down, meaning you know each row, um, I'm gonna set table across, uh, meaning I want the last, when it's talking about last, I mean the last column, not the last row. Okay, so you're looking at it and you're like, it's not working, it's not filtering that column. When you change your, when you change your scope and direction of your table calculation, it's gonna co uh, clear whatever you've selected in the filter before. So I need to edit the filter again and again, just select true. And now it's just showing me my 2021 column. And now the really cool part about the way that we set this up is that, you know, when our new data loads, when we have 2022 or 2023, it's going to automatically, you know, just keep the last column of data rather than just 2021. So it's very, very dynamic. Okay. Um, let me give you one more example. How have sales changed? for each subcategory between last year and this year. Again, so in this case, we wanna know what's the difference between 2020 and 2021. So there's not a really great way to automatically filter that, right? Like I could, again, just manually keep 2020 and 2021, but then 
my user, or like, I'm gonna have to come back and change this and publish it again. Maybe a relative date filter would work, but uh, this date is kind of out of date, it's 2023, so I can't just say the last two years. So here's another option, which would be, uh, I'll call this last two columns only. So in this case, I will say, you know, last equals zero, or, and I need to remember, I think it's last equals one, although I could be wrong. So um, let's find out. So I'll say, okay, I'm gonna put this on, uh, maybe on color for a second. So these these are what's considered the last two columns right now. Those are not, that's, that's perfect. So what I can do now is take that last two columns field that we created, put it on filters, keep only true. And then now it's just showing us the difference between 2020 and 2021. And now the cool thing is maybe I want to color the values, um, you know, based on if they're increasing or decreasing. So it's interesting, like the rate of increase is different for each subcategory. Most subcategories are positive. One big exception, exception is that machines has dropped off, um, you know, a fair amount. That seems to be the one subcategory that's in, you know, at least a state of fairly significant decline. So there you go. Those are a handful of different ways of hiding data with a filter. Um, I think one more that I would show you, uh, just so that you're aware of it, is uh, there's also, just like there's a last um, value, there's also a first value. So if you just want to keep your first column or your first three columns, um, then you can use the first function in a very similar way to how we just use the last function. Uh, cool. So quick side note, if you check out this info button up here in the top corner uh, on the video, we have Tableau classes that we run every single month. We've got things about advanced calculations like this, table calcs, um, beginner Tableau, advanced Tableau, Tableau prep, you name it. Um, we really firmly believe that nobody should have to be on their Tableau journey alone. And uh, we wanna help you and your team. Uh, so if that's of interest to you, feel free to check that out. We'd love to have you join us. Um, and as you probably know, we release new videos here on our YouTube channel every single week. And we'd love to have you tag along for those as well. So thank you so much. And we look forward to catching you on another video here soon.